everybody, and uh, welcome to the Lens Studio Twitch stream. Uh, my name is Travis, and I work on lenses and Lens Studio for Snap. And this is Amir, um, one of our interactive engineers and uh, a master lens builder, which will show us today. Um, so today um, we're going to be walking you through uh, the marker uh, tracked experience through the marker template. Um, so what Lens Studio's marker tracking gives you is the ability to track 3D content, 2D content to a unique physical image. So this is ideal for anything that exists in physical space with a custom image. So for example, you can create a lens with animated 3D characters overlaid over something like a poster or a mural or a CD case or a record. Um, and uh, it's, it's just these really cool experiences that allow you to bring AR to these physical objects in the physical world. Um, just a little note, we're not going to be showing this today, but with the marker tracking tech, you can actually track um, snap codes as well. So um, in the same way you can track a custom 2D image like a movie poster, any snap code can be used as a marker uh, for your marker experience. Um, so I think before uh, we dive in, I wanted to show some examples of marker experiences. Um, these ones are actually experiences that um, were created in collaboration with these amazing um, uh, fine artists, muralists. Um, so um, um, let me bring this up here. So these uh, um, videos are actually on uh, YouTube. Um, this one is by an artist called Allison Bamcat. And you can see that through this lens, I can unlock uh, via snap code the lens that um, basically when I look away from the marker, it, it asks me to find this image, which in this case, it's actually a, a physical mural in Los Angeles. This is in downtown LA. Um, so here I am looking at the experience, like pretending like I'm across the street. But if you're actually in downtown LA, you can actually see this in real life, this, this marker tracked experience with the dog's tongue moving around. Um, so we have another one uh, here. Again, these uh, videos of these marker examples are available on um, Len, uh, Lens Studio's uh, YouTube channel. Um, so here, um, this is this amazing mural in Miami. She's a muralist called um, uh, Chloe Hakakian. <laughs> is that how I'm saying that? Hakakian. Um, but she has this amazing mural of these um, these different women um, on this beautiful wall, and um, this mural comes to life with these butterflies that kind of fly all around it. And so we'll show you the last mural experience using marker technology. This one is in um, the Melrose area mm -hmm. of Los Angeles. So it's actually a mural in Los Angeles. A lot of people take um, selfie experiences here. So they actually stand in front of it um, with these wings behind them. And so here, Amir's using his finger as a proxy for the person standing in the way. So this is kind of a cool like selfie meets um, um, AR experience. So you take this like thing that's not high tech like a hand painted mural and you add in this this additional element of the augmented reality um so really cool experience and, and actually all of these use cases that i just showed they're not even really using 3d at all so these are like 2d animations 2d movies tracked to the marker um i think in the the case for the wings maybe that's using mm -hmm. oh and the butterflies were yes. 3d in yeah. that case but mm -hmm. it's kind of simple 3d where mm -hmm. there are two 2d planes flapping around yes. um but again even though the marker is um in 3d in physical space you can still use 2d images mm -hmm. um or play like a video on top of it in this um case we're going to be building a marker experience with 3d content um so why don't we talk a little bit about what you're going to build, Amir? Okay. Uh, so, as Travis said, we're going to use the marker, and this is our marker. And as you can see, our marker ha has a, like a coffee in here, milk here, water, and soda. And as you turn it, it's going to change to milk. And we have a label on top here, and it changes based on the rotation of the marker. So you can see it's just like going to soda, coffee, <laughs> and milk. Yeah, nice. That's what we're gonna 
create today. And then we have a little bonus feature here. We also wanted to show you all um, the uh, ability to use dynamic label. Um, so in this case, um, Amir's actually, not only is he showing the milk bottle, we're also adding this dynamic text right above, here's my finger, Yeah. <laughs> um, showing you um, what's like RPG property you would gain from drinking said drink. So <laughs> energy, um, strength from milk, of course, um, and then stamina from water. And then what was the last one? Uh, soda. Speed. Speed. <laughs> from, speed from soda. The sugar high. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's dive into starting that marker experience. So we're going to start with just um, creating a um, 3D object attached to the marker. So that, like kind of the one of the most simple use cases of just attaching an object mm -hmm. to the marker. Um, in this case, a 3D object. But again, that yes. could be a 2D plane, 2D mm -hmm. um, animation, um, whatever you want. So yep. let's dive in. Cool. So let's start with opening the Lens Studio and select the marker template. So we should wait for the marker template to come up. OK. So as you can see, marker template comes with a jumping monster. We call it Mark. <laughs> and Pun intended, yeah. everybody. His name is Mark. <laughs> Get it? So uh, let's talk about the mark marker template. So marker template comes with different prefab that you can just like choose between. Oh, so hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you can easily delete the mark. There's no more mark. And you can just like select one of the prefab that we have here and just like drag it under the mar image marker object here. And then, yeah, there's another effect. So as long as basically the object that you want to add to the marker is ch a child of the image marker object, it's going to be attached to that marker. Yes. Um, in the same way that if you're working in like a, uh, a attachment to the face, you are a child underneath the head um, object. Mm -hmm. um, marker is very similar to um, cre adding an object in relative to that mm -hmm. uh, parent. Yes. And also we have another one that we like, it's called explosion effect, that it's just like gonna explode the marker. <laughs> and also uh, one thing to make sure that we uh, provide some preview images here, but you can also have your own and just like add as a video to your uh, workflow, it's gonna be much easier. Like for instance, you can just like take a video of your uh, marker here and then import it into Lens Studio and then you can have it here and you can see it live what's happening. Cool. So let's delete that and let's start with importing our own model. So to import, as always, add new import files and let's go here fbx and we're gonna import the drinks.fbx we're gonna hit import so as you can see our uh, drinks is not tracked to the marker in order to do that you just like drag and drop it under the image marker and make sure that transform is set to zero so now you can see our you already have a lens with the with the marker this is how simple it is. You just like, oh, I rename it. You just change the size, and there you go. You have a <laughs> awesome. So let's. So just if you're if you're using the marker template, and all you want to do is add a three D object mm -hmm. to the marker, you can kind of stop here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's as simple as importing your three D object dragging it to be a child of the image marker. We're yes. going to go a little above and beyond here, but for that general use case, it's as simple as that. Exactly. So now let's import our texture for our model. And did I hit? Oh, you're importing. Let's save the project file first. Marker. And let's import again. I'm going to import all of the textures that I'm going to use for this project. Is that going somewhere? Not important. Let's try to drag and drop them. 
Okay. <laughs> He's probably hidden in one of those yeah. folders somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And my add new here. Let me save it and reopen the project file. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And uh, waiting. There it is. Oh, it's opening Ooh. the project twice. <laughs> <laughs> So while we're opening this, the other thing I wanted to mention about the marker, uh, image marker, is you can very easily um, switch that to snap code tracking, um, where basically um, with the snap code tracking, um, in the same way that the marker is, um, or the, the content is tracking to a marker image, you can have that track to a, um, generic snap code. So pretty much any snap code that you um, uh, have, your object will track to that snap code, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool. Like So for example, um, one of the cool use cases for the snap code is let's say you want to have a business card with the uh, snap code of um, your lens on it. You can scan to unlock the lens from that snap code and then immediately have the the content experience track to that snap code on your business card. Mm -hmm. And what's cool there is like basically it's like a hold to scan, unlock the lens, and you're immediately seeing content attached to your business card. Um, so using the snap code as a marker is, is pretty interesting as well. Um, but you could also, for example, have that custom image be the front of your business mm -hmm. card as well, and it, would, it could track to there. Yeah. So we're back, and let's try to create the PBR material and uh, set the values that we have here, copy. And we're sharing the normal map for all of them is gonna be the same. Normal map and material prompts is gonna be the same mm -hmm. for all of them. And let's assign the material here, yeah. It's, we have our coffee cup now, Yeah. cool. And let's try to just like name it right so we can remember. And I'm gonna copy it four times because we have four different uh, drinks. And next one is gonna be soda. And we call it soda. And next one, water. We call this water trying to be organized. And the uh, last one gonna be did you send me milk? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and let's assign it to them. Oh it's not coffee, this is water. What? So you have coffee selected there. Oh yeah. Did I there's water. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you want to fix coffee. Yeah, let's <laughs> go back on the coffee. There's coffee. <laughs> okay. There you go. So coffee is fixed, and soda. Let's go here. So like soda, and here is gonna be the milk. So now we have all of our textures for the four objects. Yes. Just so you know, if you, if you're not familiar with the objects panel, what Amir's doing is checking the checkboxes to the right of each object, which enables or disables them in the scene. So, for example, when he wants to show just coffee, he was just enabling the coffee checkbox, but making sure all of the other ones were unchecked. Yeah. Right now, milk's only checked. Yeah. So, uh, we have our drinks ready. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a twin system to just like make the uh, object to just like disappear and appear. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, it's just like super simple. You just like add the script component here. We're going to use twin. Twin is already included in the marker template, so you don't need to import it again. You just go here, twin transform. And just real quick, if, if 
I wasn't in the marker template, which tween is in the marker template, but if I wasn't to add the tween system, it's add new under scripting um, and uh, or helper scripts tween manager. And so yeah. that will automatically add the tween system yes. to your project. But like Amir said, the, the marker template already has the tween system already included. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show, uh, we're going to call this tween show to just like make them appear. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to be loop, ping pong, or anything. We're just going to keep it like that. We're going to use scale. And we're going to just like movement type to two. So whatever the from is going to be, just like imagine you're on scale one, one, one. It's going to change to the zero, zero, zero. No matter what the current scale is, it's going to change it to zero, zero. So we're going to change it to one because we want to show it. Mm -hmm. And the time we're going to with point 0.3 and yeah I think in here it's good and you can in here set the scene object to be milk and we're gonna have the same thing in here I can just like copy and paste it and we're gonna call this one hide and just like change the end to zero so what what I did here is just like have two twin one for showing the object one for hiding right. the object right so we're going to copy the same thing for all of the objects that we have in here. So let's go on soda. And just a little uh, hint of what Mir is doing here is if you click the gear of any component, you're able to copy that component and also all of the settings that come with that component. So what's cool is Amir is taking the show tween, which again um, scales the object to one 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 in the uh, local transform um, and he's able to just copy that to all of the drinks that need to do the same thing um, so click the gear you click copy and then you could click another gear and click paste to add that to the object as a new component yes again with all the settings retained so now that we have uh, everything set up here just a little pro tip to um, Amir is adding um, just for for clarity the scene object that the tween references to an object. But one little kind of tip for tween system: if you're actually working a tween system on the object itself, you want to move or scale, um, you can actually just set. You don't have to set the scene object. If you don't set scene object, mm -hmm. it infers that you're talking about the object, object yeah. that it's on. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's better to be a little clear if you want to copy this elsewhere or something. Yeah. So now that we have everything set up, we need a script to just like make the object change based on the orientation of the marker. So in here, we're going to import our script that we write before. It's called Drink Manager. I'm going to import it just like drag and drop. And let's see what does this script do. So let's put it here. I'm going to create the new object here and put this here and call it uh, drinks manager. And then save. And then save, yeah. <laughs> always save. This is my, my monthly uh, service announcement <laughs> to always save your projects when you're working on anything creative. Yeah. Yes. And we need a reference for some of the thing we have in the scene. The first thing that we need is a reference to marker because we want to ha uh, we want to get the rotation of the marker. Like in here, we get the scene object of the marker. We get the transform. Oh yeah, two. We get the transform, and then uh, just like overall in update, we're gonna get the rotation of the marker and just like divided by how many doings that we right. have. So line 57, there's a really important line. That's kind of what this whole thing relies on, which is, again, taking the marker and getting its rotation. And that's how we're going to add that interactivity for where the marker is oriented. Can we just go to the top, too, and yes. talk a little bit about mm -hmm. how inputs work? If, if you're not familiar with scripting uh, in Lens Studio, the at input system at the top of this JavaScript file is effectively exposing these parameters to the 
um, lens studio inspector, which will allow you to then configure these basically points soda to soda, point water to water. And so that's that's um, yes, that so you can see here by putting at inputs. Um, you're able to see those in the inspector and yeah. assign them as objects or colors or values, floats, ints, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so let's try to assign the image marker first. Okay, and in here, in logger, we're getting error, of course, because we don't, uh, we have not set Everything other objects, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go to the drinks and set them here. So coffee goes to coffee, water, and soda, and then milk. And also we have another, uh, if you remember the lens, let me go back, do you wanna? <coughs> I wanna show the ground. So if you can see, there is a like a, there is a texture on the ground that change the color based on the drink. So we're gonna import that as a sprite and uh, change the color based on the color that we have in here. So in order to do that, it's just like super simple. You go here and add sprite. Put my real cup on the <laughs> Okay, and in here we're just gonna set the ground and the scale is too big. We can just like like that for now. Okay. And also we need a twin for this one because we're gonna change the color to from yellow to green. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so here we're gonna actually like not just set the color on a you know yeah we're gonna have the transition that you can right, just right. like we'll see. animate yeah, the color yeah. kind of smooth it in yes That's exactly cool. so in here we're gonna have a twin color and uh, in script we can just like see what we call that twin we call this change color mm -hmm. so we put it here not play automatically and uh, we just need to change it uh, to, I think, uh, we don't need to change it actually. I think it's mm. gonna work. Yeah. Start and finish. Yeah. Okay. And let's put it on 0.5. Just one kind of cool thing about tween alpha and tween color, if you guys are using the tween system, is it actually like intelligently knows what object you're pointing it at and tries to figure out what you mean by tweening the color for that. So if it's a sprite visual or a mesh visual, um, or what are some of the other ones it supports? Like even the label, yeah. like it'll try to figure out what the alpha or color you're mm -hmm. talking about when you point an object to it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's intelligent. Well, not that intelligent, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we put ground here. And then the last thing that we're missing here is label. Uh -huh. So uh, to create the label, it's just like super simple. It's just like add new label and make sure the transform is at zero and let's bring it up so we can see it. Oh, that's <laughs> tiny. Very small. Yeah. So you can change the font size, super simple. It's just like you put the number on the font size and also let's just like turn it so you can look at the camera. Mm -hmm. So if you want to just like look at the camera, you can just like add the look at component mm -hmm. and point to the camera. And you can see it's now we cannot see it any in here because it's just like showing on the opposite side of the sprite because it's only render one side of the sprite. Right. You can just like change it to Z and it's showing and it's always look at, looking at the camera Got here. It. So uh, Lens Studio comes with different font, like we have a uh, different font that you can choose from the resources panel. But sometimes you don't want one of these fonts, you want to import your own font, you can just uh, go here and I have a font folder, drag and drop. So any OTF or TTF, you can drag into the resources panel and use your custom fonts. Yes. 
and let's put it here okay that looks good for me just like oh hello okay cool and what i want to do is, as you can see this takes this a little bit merge into the drinks i want to just like make it a little bit pop what i do is just like put the outline and just mm. like do it like this and now you can see it and it's white and there's also another option just like for the drop shadows that you can just like add a drop shadow and also there is another good option that if you go here and create the label material there is an option called fill texture if okay. you use a fill texture you can just like put the texture inside your font mm -hmm. it's kind of a really cool effects that given to your font so it'll kind of like crop the mm -hmm. input texture with the yes. you know silhouette of the mm -hmm. font mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's neat yeah and it also like if you end up dynamically scripting mm -hmm. that fill textured font it'll actually update and yeah. crop it kind of accordingly exactly yeah yeah so oh, and one just thing to add on the mm -hmm. label object, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of those um, parameters are scriptable. So um, if you do look at the uh, API, there is a the label component. Um, um, you have access to shadow color and the text, obviously, um, which is probably yeah. the main thing you would want to change here in on line 91. Um, uh, Amir is setting the labels text to one of the descriptions of the the um, drinks, which you'll yeah. see. Um, but yeah, you have full script control for these labels, which is um, pretty powerful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think if we're gonna, if we set this thing up, it's gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this working? Why did that just work? Okay. Okay, let's walk So let's go to the script. Mm -hmm. So in here, uh, also, we forgot to set the color. Oh, uh, right. I have the color here. Water is blue, and coffee is yellow. I think this was a yellow. And uh, milk is pink. Oh, that's a soda. Soda is red, and milk is. Frozen <laughs> Atlas asked, "Can you set the label fill to the camera input and?" Yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't be able yeah. to. Like, so anytime there's a texture in Lens Studio, um, one of the cool things is like it supports you know a normal texture, but it also supports anything that is like kind of derived from texture. So that includes the camera texture, the live camera mm -hmm. texture, any output camera textures, um, the uh, face input picker, the image imp uh, the image picker mm -hmm. texture. So all of those, anytime you see a texture field, it should support those yeah. um, out of the box. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do the camera feel with uh, camera input. That's yeah. awesome. Somebody should try that. Yeah. Maybe that's the next stream. <laughs> <laughs> and someone doesn't like the coffee to be yellow, so I'm going to change it to just like some other color. <laughs> um. <laughs> yellow coffee. What's okay. going on? Yeah. <laughs> So I think let's push the lens to the phone and see it on the... Okay. Oh, oh, the main thing we forgot to update our marker. Oh, yeah. We yeah. have our own custom marker here. The, the most important part about the yeah, marker yeah, template. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've been using um, the example preview videos here yeah. that we ship with Lens Studio. Mm -hmm. And that also comes with the marker image. Yeah. If you go to the documentation for the marker template you'll be able to download that high-res version of that marker mm -hmm. image and print it out. Um, I would suggest using that if you're like starting to experiment with mm -hmm. marker template, like put it on your desk and play around with it. Mm -hmm. But really what you're going to want to do is probably import your own custom image. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our own marker here. It's Now it's detecting this one is because I'm like... As it's you similar can see, to the other yeah. marker, right. Like... So one thing, this is probably a good time to talk about mm -hmm. that, what a, what makes a good marker. Yeah. So one of the things you should know with markers when tracking is it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, And that's really important because, um, so for example, this um, um, uh, mural in downtown LA visually looks different at night or if like a car is driving by it, like a headlight will hit it. So it really just has to be mostly correct. Mm -hmm. And so... Like, generally speaking, as long as you can see, like, 
half of the marker and it's mostly similar to what the marker image is, um, it'll track. Um, the important thing here though is that you do have um, a lot of kind of detail in your marker. So if we, mm -hmm. if we can like look at this one, um, there's like very clear divided uh, lines for this. Um, there's a lot of detailed texture within this marker. Um, a good example of what would make a, like this is a good marker. Um, um, and it's actually probably even better than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, what would make a bad marker if this was just, you know, a white coaster, that would be the worst mm -hmm. marker. Mm -hmm. And then if you, for example, added in just like a, a circle in the middle, there we don't have enough, enough like detail on the marker to kind of really make it a, a kind of high quality tracked experience. It might work, it just might not be as best as it could be. Mm -hmm. So definitely like look for um, as kind of like detailed as you can get. Now, Mimir's bringing up the um, the documentation page here for marker. But if you look at the there, there's like a couple examples of what might make a good marker and what might make a bad marker. And to be honest, like whatever is in between of that um, will probably work just fine. Generally, what I what I would say is when you're working with um, the marker template, mm -hmm. just test it. If you're not sure if the marker is going to work, yeah. um, just test it. A very simple way to do that is to just drag a box on your custom marker or cube and see if it's working. Feels like if it's tracking well, mm -hmm. um, it should work just fine. Mm -hmm. um, Dom Beef asks, is there um, a way to track multiple markers at once? So um, no, there is not currently. Um, that's something that we've heard before. It's something that we'll, we'll look into. Um, um, un unfortunately, at this time there isn't. What it a uh, project does allow is multiple markers within the same project. So I think a really cool example is somebody made like um, a lens that does different things on a dollar bill versus a five dollar bill versus a twenty dollar bill. And so there, it's three markers in the exact same um, project, but each one of them does a different thing. And then you're gonna ask, well, what happens if a dollar and a five dollar bill are in the same project? It's likely gonna be the one that's most prominent to the camera. Um, and then once it tracks, it'll probably track that one consistently until it loses tracking on that marker. Um, one little tip and trick, just so you guys know, is you are actually able to track both an image marker and also a snap code marker at the same time. So those can actually trap together. And in fact, we do actually have a template for a more complicated experience. This would be if you're building like a movie poster mm -hmm. experience where we actually, it's called the marker with snap code template. And you scan to unlock with the snap code. Let's say it's a huge poster and you're in the bottom left corner. You scan to unlock with the snap code. It'll start tracking the whole poster experience even though you only see the small corner. And then as you pull back and you start to get more of the marker come in, coming in, uh, for example, the movie poster, it'll start to transition the tracking to the bigger movie poster. And so that's an example of utilizing multiple marker tracking, but using just the snap code marker and also the image marker. So if you are creating like an experience where it's a really big marker with the snap code um, embedded into the poster or the mural, the marker with Snapco template is a pretty good place to look mm -hmm. look at. Now, I will say, if you're for your average basic marker experience, probably just use the marker template. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. So let's go and add our own marker. In order to do that, you can just like either from object panel. If you do it from object panel, it's gonna create you a marker object. But if you do it from the resources, it's gonna import it as a resource. So we already have a marker here, so we don't want another object as a marker. So we're gonna import as a resources. So we're gonna search image marker and click on it. And uh, in my PNG, I have a marker. I call it preview, but let me call it main. Marker. And just so you guys know, that, that marker image doesn't need to be gigantic. Yes. Um, 
you can actually, I mean, you're using like a 512, 512 yes. when you import it. Mm -hmm. um, so just so you know, like you, don't, you generally speaking, you probably don't need like a 2K texture mm -hmm. for the marker. I think 512 is a great number for yeah. a texture like this. Mm -hmm. So in here, in order to change our marker, you just like drag and change your marker, as you can see here. So, um, so I don't have a preview of that. So let's try to sync the push the lens to the phone and just like look it at on the phone. Let's push it here. Here. And let's go. Oops, is that the No, that's the old that's one. That's the old one. Yeah. So it's still pushing. Yeah. Press push. Yes. Let's, Let's push, push it again. Uh, so lens push. Is it showing the old one? Yeah, it's still the old one. Here we can come back to it. Yeah. I think it's the internet's here. It's okay, we'll come back. I'll tell you when it's pushed. Okay. So, let me... So, another important thing in a marker template that it's better to have, like, imagine, let me change a photo to a right, something it just, it else. It just pushed for some reason. Yeah, oh. so we're good now. We're good? Yeah. Okay, let's go back. Okay. So, ooh, the ground pattern is too big, but the coffee is brown. <laughs> Got it. So the yeah. texture on the ground is changing, the text label is changing, the models are changing. They're also animating by calling your tween system. Yeah. Um, we still need to adjust the texture on the ground. Yes. Um, another thing we're missing is the hint, right? Yes. So when you one thing with the marker template is when you look away, all of this is built in for you. This like look for image. Um, you can also tap this um, on in Snapchat to bring up. Um, a kind of example of the marker just one of the like little also tips and tricks here is if you have two people that are using uh the same lens mm -hmm. one of them can be the marker one of them yeah. can be the marquee, I don't marquee know. Maybe. <laughs> um the person with the the maybe. lens that's looking at the marker um so yeah oh it's it's set to this oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um um so i think um Let's show them now how to set up this hint, okay. which is built into the template, but you can kind of customize it with your custom yes. marker to look for. So in order to do that, you could just like go and uh, import files and select marker preview, preview again and import it as a texture. This time, this is a texture that we imported here. And this is a different texture from your actual marker image. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons why is like depending on like the detail of your marker, you might want to do like a more stylized version of the marker. It kind of depends on what your experience is. Um, so so we got, I'll give you that control to allow them to be different for mm -hmm. what the hint looks like versus the actual marker. Yeah. So to change a, a hint in here, just open the orthographic camera, and you can see there is a script called magnify hint. Magnify hint has a script attached to it that has a preview texture input. And all you need to do is just like add your own texture to here. And now it's so there. Now it's showing you the coaster to yeah. look at. Cool. Let's go back here and change the size of the ground. And then I think we would be done. So Electrical Synapse asks, what's the suggestion for the best way to make a marker? So the first thing to, to keep in mind uh, is that it's a 2D image. So that 2D image, generally speaking, you're going to want to make sure that it's like a flat plane. Um, you're probably not going to want to use a marker like that wraps around like a, a, a soda can because it ultimately is only tracking a flat plane in real physical space. So think about planes. Um, next, again, the more detail, the better. But you will be surprised. Like it, there, 
some markers, like, you don't expect them to track really well because there's not too much detail, but when you actually try it, it's pretty okay. Um, and uh, so generally speaking, I just suggest, like, kind of get a baseline for maybe what you want to try and see if it's working. And, and again, kind of going through the process of adding a marker to the marker template should make it really easy to just test, is the marker good enough? Um, and you can kind of test it. Um, at you know, I generally when you're testing, you want to test like, is it um, um, uh, working close up? How far away can you walk from it? Um, and you'll start to see kind of the quality of the marker using the experience. So always just try to use the experience is probably best. Um, and then the question, how much does color factor in? Um, it doesn't factor in that much. And the reason I say that much is because it is accounted for, but in the same way that when you desaturate an image, you can still kind of see that like one color is darker or lighter than another color. So it really just matters from like a kind of saturation of the color than it does the actual color itself. Um, but that said, if you have two different colored things, if the saturation is great enough, they it might recognize those as two different markers um so but generally speaking the thing that's more important with marker and the kind of design of marker is um the um the kind of design of the the actual elements in the illustration itself less the color um so hopefully that answers your question but you would be surprised what does work as a marker um you know, even even this one, I think this pattern didn't have to be as detailed. Mm -hmm. um, you can probably lose even 75% of that detail, and it's probably still going to be tracking fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also keep in mind that you can cover a marker. This is something that that's cool. Like for example, when you're you know in a movie poster experience, when you're looking up to the movie poster, it'll start recognizing that movie poster pretty much when like. 40% of that movie poster is in the camera. So you start to see it much quicker. You don't need to see the whole movie poster yeah. to get it. Um, the other really cool thing is with marker tracking, um, once it tracks, you can actually go pretty far away from the scene. So we've actually had these murals, and we were like testing to see how far you can like walk away from it, and like it's pretty far, yeah. <laughs> um, which is cool. Um, it's always cool to see AR like super off in the distance and really tiny. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, that should work too. Um, but you do need to be a little closer than super far away to get that initial detection. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Yeah. So. We have a lens, yeah, so you need to uh, push it. I think push the update. Yeah. Let's push, and let's go back here. And it's a little slow. Yeah. We shouldn't have filmed this in the back cave. <laughs> <laughs> so the lens is push. Okay. Oh, we'll come back to it again. See okay. It's taking a while. Yeah. So um, I think one of the other things I did want to go into the script really quick because um, mm -hmm. I um, we're not writing through this whole script, but one of the interesting things Amir is doing here is setting kind of like a structure for all of the parameters he's tuning in this drink configs. That's a really like cool way to keep like organization of some of the parameters that you're tuning in your project. So instead of having to have like it, you know, if you were to do this just with variables at the top of the script, you would have var milk color, mm -hmm. var milk description, var, you know, milk name. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing here instead is we're creating a structure so we can just reference dot name dot description. So we are going to obviously post this project online, but it's a kind of cool pattern to follow if you're having to tune a lot of different things. Um, uh, moving on, maybe talk a little bit about how we're detecting angle here. Mm -hmm. So we, we already talked about how we're getting the rotation, yeah. but how are you detecting like which sector of the pie of the circle mm -hmm. are you in? Yeah, what we do is in here, in our green config, we have an array of four right now. As you can see, we have a milk, water, soda, coffee here. And we're what we're doing is we're dividing it by 360. So we're going to have only four. And in here, you can just like see that the like each like 
each item in angle it's gonna the angle for each item is gonna be 90 because we're dividing 360 by 4 right and in here we go down and we're just using math.floor to make sure that we're using integer we're not using uh, a float and we're dividing the current orientation of the marker that we're getting here by that number that we mm -hmm. use up here which is 90 and then that number is going to show what drink we have so like it's an index into yeah. that data table mm -hmm. cool because we have four mm -hmm. for example it, if it's going to be just like 90 it's going to show milk if it's go above it's going to show water and yeah and in here we have a, a function called view drinks and we're passing the drinks that we have here so the first thing that we're we're getting is the drinks name in here we're getting a drink and in here we have another function called show or hide twins so for this function we use like start twin we need a we have two inputs called twin object and also there's a boolean to show or hide the uh, the what's it called uh, the twin animation. So if we go here, we we're just like having a variable call active, and it's gonna check if the drink name is uh, equal to config name. It's gonna just like show and hide it here. And there's another thing we have here. It's uh, there's a twin for the background color that we have, like a ground color, as you can see in here. These two line is driving the uh, changing the color for the twin. As you can see here, we have a comfy color that we just like set it up in here. Awesome. Cool. And uh, obviously, we, we're going to share the um, the uh, um, project and obviously the script as part of that project with you guys, so you can kind of break it apart or use whatever you want. Um, Apox suggested, do you have any suggestions on where to learn to use 3D math, like Euler angles? Um, I've been struggling with the math part. Got it. Um, yeah, totally. There's um, actually, Electric Synapse might have just posted it. There's a really good YouTube channel. If you guys know what it is, it is a game developer who kind of walks through um, different um, aspects of Mac as they relate to game development and interactive um, development. Um, so yeah, that's, okay, so he, he did link that. It's a really cool channel. And, and what's really nice about that is, um, you know, math is obviously very big, um, but there's pieces of it that come up time and time again in 3D um, experience creation, um, you know, understanding quaternions and, and Euler angles and um, dot product, these kind of things just come up time and time again when you're making character movement systems, like I think that video talks through. So that, um, that YouTube channel is, is great. Um, there's also a book uh, called, I think, um, I'm looking at it now, 3D Math Primer for Graphics and Game Development. But any of the books that are like math plus game development or math plus interactive development, generally speaking, like kind of give you the subset of math that um, that you need to worry about for things that you might be doing in 3D interactive experiences. So I would always just, instead of taking like general math course, always kind of focus on searching for game development um, lessons on math because they're going to be they're going to be referencing transforms and game engine uh, type things like local position world position rotation quaternion rotation all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. hopefully that's that's helpful cool um so we have a lens yeah maybe switch back um cool so we have our final lens again which we'll, we'll send to you uh with the coaster. We should also <laughs> include the coaster in yeah. there somewhere. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I guess it's in the yeah, project. Yeah, it's in the project um, called preview. As you rotate, you get the different 3D uh, object, you know, and I can rotate it around. Oh, another thing we forgot to mention is 
um, you, by default using the marker template you also get this kind of like little cool um, recognition kind mm -hmm. of animation when it happens you can always turn that off yeah. in the template mm -hmm. but um, it's something that we thought would be very helpful to kind of have some consistencies mm -hmm. when recognizing markers but if you don't want to use it you don't mm -hmm. have to um, and then we're changing the label as, as you go yeah. um, so that's it. Um, again, we'll post this um, project online. Is there anything mm -hmm. else you wanted to cover? I think, uh, I think yeah. Okay, we're, cool. We're good. If anyone has any questions. Yeah, does, well, we can stick around if yeah. anybody 